Okay. Hello again. We're looking at the amounts of various species in an acid or a base solution. This is good stuff. This is a good overview of how acids and bases behave. So they tell us start with a solution of a strong acid, HA. This could be hydrochloric acid or um, HBr, HI, any of those things. So we have some kind of acid. It's a top six acid, and that means when it reacts with water, every one of these is going to give away a hydrogen to the water. We're going to end up with A minus, and the H2O will turn into H3O plus. This is called a quantitative reaction or a 100% reaction, meaning unlike with weak acids, there are no holdbacks here. Every single one of these HAs will break up. So that means if this original amount was 0 0.100, you drop this into water and every single one of these breaks into A minus, so we'll get 0 0.100 of them, and H3Os, so we'll get 0 0.100 of them as well, and there won't be any of this left. All gone. So does that answer all the questions? Our H3O would be 0 0.100 moles per liter the same as the acid used to be. The amount of HA, that'll be extinct, none left. 100% of these broke into pieces, there are no intact ones remaining. A minus should be there in the same amounts as the H3O. And this one we'll actually have to work for. This is an acid, so it produces hydroxide, or sorry, hydronium ions. If we want the hydroxide ions, we have to calculate them, and that will mean doing probably this. H3 times OH equals KW, which means OH is KW, 1 times 10 to the minus 14 divided by H3O, which we found was 0 0.1. And we get 1 times 10 to the minus 13 moles per liter. So as you probably knew already, anytime you have an acid with a certain concentration, that just converts to hydronium ions at the exact same concentration. And if you're strongly acidic like this, the amount of hydroxide in the solution is extremely low. In other words, being very high in acid automatically means you're very low in base. Let's see if we can do that again. Okay, strong base this time, so a lot of the same numbers only going in the opposite direction. If we take a base, this is pretty much, well, it's going to behave like hydroxide, but they're saying it's not hydroxide, it's some other strong base. When we put this in water, B will do that thing bases do where they say, give me one of your hydrogens. So this forms. And the water is now stripped of one of its hydrogens and has become hydroxide. This making hydroxide is what makes us point at something and say that is a base. And in this one, again, we have 0 0.300 moles per liter of B. Every one of these will react, and so we will get 0 0.300 of the conjugate acid. We'll get 0 0.300 of hydroxide. And the B will have all vanished. Every one of them took up a hydrogen and turned into HB. So there's none left. All right, so total amounts, 0 0.300 moles per liter there, 0 there, oh, and now they want the pOH. Well, the pOH is negative log of the hydroxide concentration, which we know is 0 0.3. What is log 0 0.3? 0 0.523. Don't forget this minus on the front. When you log this, you'll get negative 0.523, but then this log, this log flips it around to positive. So 0 0.523 would be our pOH. And then if you want the pH, P 
pH is always, at least at room temperature, 14 minus the pOH. And 14 take away 0.523 is 13.477. Good. So again, if you're a strong base, all, all of you converts into hydroxide ions, and the base, the original base, becomes extinct because every one of them took up a hydrogen and turned into something else. That's good general rules to know when you're handling an acid-base solution, is what, what ions appear and which ions disappear.